Hey folks, this is Paul talking to you about A Course in Miracles, talking about forgiveness again. Um, the more that I read the Course and apply it and become clearer about what it's meaning and saying, it, it keeps changing my understanding of what forgiveness is. Uh, <clears throat> So forgiveness is the same thing as the atonement. This is the ultimate <laughs> um, interpretation. There's a statement, there's a couple of statements. One says, forgiveness, atonement, salvation, true perception, all are one. Meaning they're all the same thing. Just different synonyms, different words for the same thing. Forgiveness is the same thing as the atonement. Uh, forgiveness is the same thing as salvation. Forgiveness is the same thing as true perception. Um, and there's another quote somewhere I could try to find that it says something like uh, atonement, salvation, forgiveness, all are names for the same thing or something like that. So for me, that significantly changes what forgiveness means and and compared to how I used to think of it as a process or as something that you do or some set of steps that you must perform, um, it really is the end goal. That there's a state of mind where you are choosing and accepting the atonement and in that state of mind where your perception has already been corrected and you're already fully having true perception with no need to fix anything or undo anything or, or heal yourself because you're already done that state of pretty much just about being ready to go home is a state of forgiveness and so that lines up perfectly with how the Course actually describes forgiveness as being you know forgiveness is still and it, and it looks and quietly and it does nothing <laughs> um, or that forgiveness uh, recognizes that your brother hasn't sinned and in that view all your sins are forgiven um, and doesn't just say you know some of your sins are forgiven it's all of them have been completely forgiven in that in that state or that viewpoint it also talks about how the Holy Spirit has already forgiven you and he sees you with perfect forgiveness so he is in this state of true perception seeing with a forgiving way of seeing doesn't have any need to do forgiveness doesn't have any process doesn't have um, steps and things to undo as such he's already in forgiveness he's already in the state of forgiveness um, so forgiveness and true perception are the same thing. Forgiveness and the atonement are the same thing. So what we're talking about here isn't forgiveness as something that you do. It's really the end result and the state that you get into when you're done with all you're doing. When you're completely finished with all of your application all of your practice when it's when you've fully healed and you are practically awakened and you're aware of dreaming in that condition of mind in that state of mind in that state of perceiving correctly perfectly truly perceiving accurate perception that is the state of forgiveness so, forgiveness really is a state of mind, not a process. 
um, <clears throat> and it's a state of mind that also recognizes that there is nothing to forgive. So in the ego, it always thinks, okay, there's something I got to do. There's some, there's a forgiveness I have to do. But for, forgiveness, as defined by a Course in Miracles, doesn't really say that. It says that um, forgiveness recognizes, sees, perceives that there isn't anything that needs to be forgiven because everything is seen with forgiveness and you only see innocence. So it's, and it also talks about how the Holy Spirit uh, looks with forgiveness from the beginning or overlooks error from the beginning in order not to make errors so that there isn't a mess to clean up. So like in this perfect state of true perceiving, um, you only see and believe in innocence. You only recognize the truth about everything. And you see with truth things that are false register as false and unreal and things that are real you recognize as real and you don't make mistakes you don't make errors and so therefore you don't give reality to these errors that you're making he who would not forgive must judge to justify his failure to forgive is talking about if I slip out of the state of, of forgiveness, if I go out of perfect always being forgiving and I go into judgment, I'm going to have to justify, well, I, I didn't want to stay forgiving because da, 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 this is real, that's real, making errors real. Then, because you've made errors and you, now you've gone into false perception, you now believe that, okay, I've, now I've made something real, and now I've got to do a forgiveness. Now I've got to somehow fix my perception and get myself back to true perception. So now, now then you think, well, the ego thinks, this thing is real, here's a real problem, here's a real error, and it seems real to me, which means that so long as I believe it's real, I'm not going to be able to change it and, and undo it. To atone is to undo, and because atonement is forgiveness, for, to forgive is to undo, not to do. So, <laughs> so, so then you think, okay, how do I go from... I've made a, a mistake and I'm in a mistaken viewpoint and I believe something that isn't true and I'm perceiving wrongly. How do I get back to forgiveness? It's not about how do I forgive this, it's how do I correct and move away from this error judgment state, false perceiving and get my mind corrected so that it can resume being forgiving. Really, um, <clears throat> for being forgiving is an attitude. It's a way of seeing and it's a benevolent, gentle way of looking at things so that you only see innocence. <clears throat> and you don't see any sin and you don't make illusions real that's that's being forgiving and it's not that you have to let you're not like doing something you're not having to fix errors you're not you don't see that there is any sin that needs to be undone you don't see that there's um, mistakes that have to be corrected it's a state of mind where you're always having a forgiving attitude you're always being forgiving. Forgive my little break here because 
You don't see nothing. It's not happening. So think of it more as you don't do forgiveness, you be forgiveness. And becoming forgiving isn't something that you temporarily do. It's not like, okay, I do this and I fix this and then I'm done with my forgiveness. It's not, it, it's not like that. It's that you are trying to get to where you're always being forgiving. You're always looking with a forgiving perception. You're always in a forgiving mode or a forgiving attitude that looks and doesn't see anything to be forgiven because it's, it's, a, it's a way of seeing innocence and truth. So what you're trying to do really is to make forgiveness permanent. You're trying to get to where you're recognizing the truth always, where you're, where you're becoming, you're becoming more forgiving over time as you perfect and clean up your perception and get it to a state of true perception where it is perfected. And now you're always forgiving instead of only occasionally forgiving. Like you, it's sometimes you'll see, okay, there's a person, I'm going to forgive them, and I'm going to do a forgiveness, and I'm forgiving this person, and then I'm going to stop my forgiveness, and now I'm done. And maybe you've moved a little bit towards forgiveness, but ultimately you got to move into the atonement, into constant forgiveness. And that doesn't mean constant doing, it means constantly being in your right mind, constantly being miracle-minded, constantly being in true perception, constantly seeing correctly, constantly believing the truth, constantly aligned with the Holy Spirit's perception. His perception is always forgiving. So forgive it, being forgiving isn't a doing thing, it's a, it's a being thing. And it's permanent. And let's also talk about how God is forgiving. Because it's true that God does not forgive. Because God does not see or believe that there's anything that needs to be forgiven. He has the same state of mind that's reflected in forgiveness. Where he does not believe in sin. And he doesn't see sin, he doesn't make errors, he doesn't make illusions real. He see he if he were to see, he would see with true perception, and he knows that there is no sin. Which means that he always has a forgiving attitude. If if you were to say God doesn't have a forgiving attitude, you're gonna have to say God is unforgiving. If God was unforgiving, unforgiveness is attack and judgment and condemnation of sin and death, murderous. God would have to be having that kind of mind or attitude if he was unforgiving. So because forgiveness isn't a doing, it's a recognition that there is nothing to forgive because of the correct way of believing or seeing or knowing, God is always forgiving. He is permanently, eternally forgiving in that sense that he, he doesn't believe that you've ever sinned. He doesn't believe that there's anything wrong with you. He doesn't believe that you deserve punishment. He doesn't believe that your illusions are real. He doesn't believe, he doesn't have an unforgiving attitude. So God is forgiving, but God doesn't do forgiveness, fixing unforgiveness, because he never attacks and never judges and never condemns. So everything in heaven, 
all of the sonship, all of the angels, uh, all of your creations, God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, all of it is uh, is forgiving all the time. It's always a forgiving, innocent, recognizing, truth, acknowledging state of being. That is what forgiveness really means. Um, the state of mind, the right-mindedness that um, is free of attack and free of sin. So whenever you're not in the atonement, whenever you're not in true perception, if there's any slight hint of a belief in sin and death, if there's any illusions that you think are real, if you're making separations real, if you've got, um, if you're angry at someone, if you are suffering in any way, if you're having sickness and death, if uh, anything seems to have gone wrong, you now need something, or you seem to need something. There's an illusion that you need forgiveness because. There's an illusion that you that you're not in a forgiving state, that you're somehow damaged, or you've you've become judgmental, or you've stopped being forgiving. So now it seems that this that if it were true that you actually have failed to forgive, that now it seems like because you believe in there's something that I have to correct, something I've got to do, something I need to apply or practice to heal or get myself back to the truth, you will now think, now I've got to do something. Now there's a real thing sitting there in front of my face and it's I can see it and it seems to be real and therefore my ego believes in it. And my ego now thinks, I need to do something to this. I now need to fix it. I need to attack it with coarse terms. I need to throw things at it. I need to make it go away. I need to fix it and heal it and change it and, and do something. And that's really ego. It's the, it's the ego getting involved in forgiveness. And typically designed to keep the problem real. Typically designed not to question whether there even really is a problem. Whether there even really is something that you need to do. <laughs> and the belief that you have an unforgiveness is a false belief. It's a belief that something has to be done because something bad has been done and now something else has to be done in order to fix and atone for the thing that you did. So now it's like, okay, now I did sin. Now I've made sin real, I did something and now I'm gonna have to do something else to clean up the mess and get myself back to the atonement, back to forgiveness. But if you go about it by keeping your belief that there's something to forgive, <laughs> it will stay unforgiven. So what does it mean to really practice forgiveness or to apply it? Because really when you're being forgiveness there isn't anything to do and that's the state in which I need do nothing because I acknowledge that nothing has really gone wrong there isn't any sin only the truth is true so I don't need to do anything that is forgiveness but if you're not in that state of mind if you have slipped and you've judged 
or you're having a nightmare or something's gone wrong and it's all suffering in hell, what am I going to do? How do I, how am I going to get fixed? I need some healing. I, need, I seem to need something because I've perceived that there is a lack. I seem to have to do something because I think something's happened. And so you get you get into these these ego viewpoints about what forgiveness is and what it is that needs to be done in order to get to the proper result or the right state of mind that usually all of the ego's handling of the situation is going to have ego in it and it's usually it's going to mess with the process and make it difficult and make illusions real and keep them real and it, and it often is not really forgiveness and it often doesn't take you all the way up to the atonement because when you are applying forgiveness or you're trying to shift your perception back to true perception if you don't get all the way to perfect true perception and atonement the forgiveness is not really complete because forgiveness is this atonement state so if you don't get all the way there and have a perception of atonement the recognition that nothing has happened um, there never really was a sin because whatever seemed to happen was just in the dream that you're worthy of love that sin and guilt and fear and sickness and death are all false lies they're not true that you have no objections to accepting the truth God's truth accepting the atonement if you and to then get into that mindset where you allow yourself to receive love from God to receive miracles um, as an acceptance of the truth that acceptance of the truth is being in forgiveness if you don't get all the way there in your doing forgiveness you're not really efficiently forgiving you're not really becoming perfectly forgiving you're not having true forgiveness you're not completing the forgiveness unless it gets you to the atonement but because we have so much shit <laughs> to undo so many beliefs that there is something to forgive so many beliefs that there's something I've got to do significantly because there's so much that's been done and so much has happened and I've got to fix it all as a great big giant stockpile of doom and gloom that as you try to get yourself to be forgiving which really should mean looking from the atonement from a holy instant from the truth accepting atonement you're down here in the in the swamps of hell trying to just get yourself a little bit shifted towards that you're trying to do like a I've got this slow burn forgiveness that's taking me years to get past or I, I just can't seem to forgive this person or they have this long-term sickness that I haven't been able to forgive yet or and you're sort of stuck down here making little kind of little jumps little shifts in perception from where you're sort of you're, you're trying to introduce something truthful <laughs> down here in the mess in the mud to get yourself to move a little bit towards truth to get yourself a little bit of peace a little bit of happiness and healing but often um, <clears throat> it just takes time to be able to get yourself all the way up to the atonement to really be fully forgiving to really to really embrace with total willingness the atonement which means I'm finally choosing to be totally forgiving 
having no ego left to have to deal with. And so most of the time we spend sort of down in these lower levels trying to apply principles or <clears throat> do forgiveness or use some kind of technique or some kind of a uh, little willingness that's needed in order to shift towards some truth. Any movement that you make upwards towards the atonement is willingness. The only way you get there is to be willing to accept and receive the truth. So <clears throat> that's why you have to have a little willingness as the as the key desire and movement towards the atonement it's 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 only really will it's not sideways willingness it's only really willingness when it's a willingness to admit some truth a willingness to move towards the truth a little bit more to a, to be honest to to admit to what you're doing to yourself to um, confess to what's been really happening in your mind, to undo denial and to admit that you're in denial and that you don't want to accept the truth. All of these inward movements, which are upward movements, require your willingness. And if you don't have that willingness, you will just stay in hell. <laughs> Suffering forever. Eating payday bars. Um. So you might then wonder, what is a forgiveness technique? What can I do? How do I get myself out of hell? What can I apply? How can I use the Course's principles or use the metaphysics or whatever? And I think the truth is that forgiveness is this end goal. It's this perfect state of true perception. It's acceptance of the Atonement. Anything that you do down here in the Hell to move yourself in any way towards that is a good thing. And that could even mean spiritual paths that are not A Course in Miracles, or they don't even know about A Course in Miracles, where you do something, or you undo something, or you have a certain kind of way of believing, or a certain attitude that helps to heal the mind somehow even like meditation is very long-winded and tedious but eventually it would get you to the atonement it would bring about a forgiving mind whatever works and this is why the curriculum of everyone is different and individual and we all have different paths and beliefs and things that we're able to accept and tools that we're able to use or certain kinds of willingness that we have or prayers that you feel particularly connected with that seem to help you whatever it doesn't matter just God just wants you to come home however you get there <laughs> so it's not that there is one forgive one way to do forgiveness but there is one truth there is ultimately one curriculum because the truth is the curriculum the truth is what you're trying to learn everything about truth and reality your acceptance of reality is the curriculum it's what you're trying to study it's what you're trying to integrate what you're trying to take on and make be your way of perceiving and accepting it, learning through all your lessons or whatever, trying to learn 
to love, learning the truth, learning to be peaceful, learning to be happy, learning to be forgiving, to recognize innocence and to not believe in sin and separation and death. Um, that's the one curriculum, the truth. And what lessons you need to get there, or what form they take, or what words you're going to use, or what techniques you're going to implement, or what methods, or what prayers, or um, routines, or using the workbook, um, doing meditations, other healing modalities, whatever it is that is part of your willingness and part of your movement towards the truth is totally fine and is going to get you there eventually. Um, so doing forgiveness doesn't really have one format or one form. It doesn't really have uh, I've got to say this and I've got to think that and I've got to do this next and then I'm going to do that and then that's going to get me there. <laughs> there are many different uh, renditions of that. There are things that are working for people that are just whatever they've come up with that happens to approximately, roughly, eventually get them to some tr more true state, a more peaceful state of mind, so you don't have to get like bent out of shape about am I, how do I do forgiveness and how do I get there, but it certainly helps to have um, guidelines, techniques, whatever, steps, uh, methods that can assist you or point you in the right direction or be something that you can follow, something that you can sort of work with or apply to operate some semblance of forgiveness, some semblance of atonement truth that somehow this process or whatever somehow aligns with, points you towards the truth enough that, it, that it's beneficial and hopefully doesn't take a long time. And so A Course in Miracles is designed to save time and to, uh, the workbook is particularly very masterful in its the whole thing is the uplifting and the correcting of your perceiving. The whole thing is the is a process to go through to shift from false perception to Christ vision, which is true perception, and forgiveness. So the entire workbook, all the lessons are designed to implement, Jesus says, implement the truth in your mind to, it's, it's a way of putting the truth, putting your mind into a true perception state. So it's a, it's a way of bringing about that atonement, that forgiveness. So doing the lessons is applying forgiveness. Doing the lessons is correcting perception. It is shifting you towards true perception. Um, miracles are correctors of perception and they increase the level of communication, they heal the mind, they raise your awareness, they help you to be aware that you're the one who's doing things. Um, Receiving those miracles, giving those miracles is all part of the doing or the implementing of the atonement. Because there's an atonement plan that everyone's a part of that involves um, the Great Crusade. 
and you become part of the atonement when you accept the atonement is all part of the undoing of the separation the undoing the I don't need to do anything because it's there's nothing to do because it's been undone it's it's stopped being done you're no longer attacking you're no longer condemning making sin real you're not doing those things you stop doing them you stop judging you become forgiving and stay in a forgiving state which is the undoing of the ego it's the reversal of the reversal of cause and effect it's the cancellation of sin and its effects it's resurrection the reversal of death to get to a state where you are symbolizing immortality in the body and you are um, having a resurrected mind that is forgiveness Raising the dead is forgiveness. Jesus says that's true. Um, <clears throat> so, any way that you do mind healing is helping you towards the atonement. It is a form of forgiveness. Um, <clears throat> certainly there are some processes that can help and may be useful, but basically all of the processes, if they're going to help at all, if they work, if they actually work, they will move you from your false perception to a truer perception, i.e. from false beliefs to truer beliefs, from false mindedness to right mindedness. Um, because they contain alignment with or expression of the atonement truth forgiveness um, so you could even invent new ways to implement true forgiveness to implement the truth and to um, <clears throat> bring about the forgiving state of mind Provided it in some way heals your mind, if it in some way is undoing separations, uh, dissolving differences, cancelling out effects and consequences of a belief in sin and attack, uh, a reduction in attack, a reduction in believing that something's really happened. Um, because even the belief that there's anything happening in this world is the belief in sin because the separation hasn't happened this world hasn't happened it doesn't exist there is no world everything that happens in space-time is an illusion nothing is really happening <laughs> yeah. that line of words that I just used to state the truth that is an application of forgiveness. It is. It has, to some degree, raised my level of sanity. <laughs> it has awakened me a little bit. So even as a technique, speaking the truth, saying what is true about yourself or another person or the world, is corrective it helps you to heal um, and actually if you if you acknowledge and be grateful for the truth about someone's highest self their holy self their innocent self the self that God created and loves 
If you acknowledge that truth about a person and speak about it, <clears throat> um, you're going to start feeling heaven <laughs> coming through you and healing yourself and the other person because you're you're sort of putting out a very high vibrational wavelength thought up here that will correct perception and it will bring truth and light into your mind that is an application of the course that is forgiveness or shall we say that is a way to undo and to stop doing or to cancel some of the ego attitudes you were having when you believed that the lower things were true of the person, that their sickness was real and they're really a body and stuff. <clears throat> You can look at it in terms of cause and effect and look at how you're believing that something else on this level, other people, are the cause of you. And all the beliefs that you have about what they've done to you, what they've caused you, the effects that they put in you, how they made you feel, all the things they did or are doing or will do, are your belief in horizontal causality that something on this level causes effects in something else on this level therefore that your brother is the cause of you which means he's God and he is your father <laughs> which is not true so cancel out all those beliefs that person is not the cause of me they did not put these feelings in me they have not made me upset they are not doing this to me against my will um, they haven't done anything to me at all they don't have the ability to do that they're not responsible for how I feel this is all forgiving because it's dismantling the ego beliefs the false perceptions and moving towards truth the truth is that God is the only cause of me not other people so if I really get clear about that and I look what what beliefs am I having how am I perceiving and fearing about what other people are doing to me if I cancel those beliefs and don't believe them and choose and I may even do affirmations to affirm and convince myself that it's not true that they're doing this it's not true that they've done anything to cancel and break those ties of causality on this level puts me back into the truth that I'm responsible for choosing all of the things I feel and experience I must have wanted to suffer um, how's it go I must have made a wrong decision because I'm not at peace I made the decision myself that is a forgiving prayer because now you're acknowledging if I'm suffering I chose to suffer if I'm sick I chose to be sick if I'm dying I'm making myself die if I am having upset feelings I'm upsetting my feelings on purpose I want to suffer <laughs> that's what we're doing in the ego with we're choosing to suffer and die on purpose consciously which is why you don't have to choose it so when you take responsibility for all the things that you're choosing if I'm suffering and if I'm upset and if I'm not at peace I must have made a wrong decision I made the decision myself I chose to be unhappy I chose to be afraid I chose to perceive myself as a victim I chose to make my body sick 
I chose to do it to myself. This is the secret of salvation. Everything that I'm doing, I'm doing it to myself. If you acknowledge that, get rid of all the bullshit that says otherwise, uh, stop believing otherwise, take ownership and responsibility of what you're doing to yourself and choose again have a little willingness let the Holy Spirit help you and heal you open up to receive his help and his healing um, have some willingness what I find is that even if I even do that little step where I'm acknowledging if I would even say something like, you're not really doing this to me, I must have made this decision myself and I must have chosen this, it's not you, even that is enough of a, of a movement towards the truth. It demonstrates willingness that that is enough invitation to the Holy Spirit to start helping me and things happen as a result of that just a little sign of willingness is a willingness to admit some truth moves you towards sanity and salvation the truth will set you free um, and that's just another one way of doing a technique where you're like this is how I'm I'm becoming willing to be forgiving this is how I'm becoming willing to admit some truth this is how I'm being more honest. This is this is just a way or a, a path through by which I'm acknowledging some facts or some truth, some atonement level truth, God's truth. That I am you could even like just sit here and just receive some love. Just let God love you. Receive love, let some love in. Let the feathers come in, which are often signs of angels. Um, just practice doing some receiving, letting yourself be loved, letting yourself accept that God does love you because of the atonement truth. That is applying, implementing the truth into your mind through healing. Healing is a word for the transition from false perception to true perception healing is the word for in the course for the undoing of what seems to be being done the choices that I'm constantly making I'm changing my mind making a different choice and therefore not doing the things I was doing to myself and now I'm choosing something else that is that is shifting you towards forgiveness. That is a forgiving viewpoint. If you <clears throat> did something years ago that you regret and you feel sinful and guilty about and ashamed of, and you think you deserve to suffer because of what you did, and <clears throat> these are beliefs that you have. They're in your mind, it's not just in the past, it's actual current beliefs that you have about yourself tied to the past event that you have not let go of and you haven't undone it because you still believe that in this part of your mind that represents a past event you sinned and you're still guilty and that belief is still active and it's still doing something if you become willing to forgive yourself and recognize that you didn't really sin and you don't deserve punishment, you deserve forgiveness uh, and you love yourself a bit more, that is implementing some of the atonement. That is a forgiving attitude. That is doing forgiveness. It's just another way, just another form, just another process it's like the entire spectrum of everything that you could ever do to heal your mind is fair game it is helpful it is if it moves you towards the truth if it's taking you home if it's putting you in touch with reality if it's giving you more happiness if it's bringing you joy 
if it's helping you to love more, if any of these things that goes towards God, it's a good thing. It's part of the correction, it's part of the healing, it's part of the miracle, part of doing the course, it's part of the application, the practice. Uh, Jesus is reminding me about purification. Miracles are everyone's right, but purification is necessary first. So all of this stuff, all of these ways that we correct us, our minds, and the Holy Spirit does healing on our minds and infuses us with truth, is <laughs> purification. And you have to do all this purification, correction of perception, correction of your belief system, correction of your mind, to get to being correct, uh, having the truth, accepting atonement, being forgiving. So that after you've done all this purifying, sorting out, what is true and what is false. That's another very valid way to do the purifying, to understand is, it, is this thing really true in accord with God's truth and His will? If it's not, it must be false, so I'm willing to let it go because it's not true. I recognize it as false because it cannot be God's will. God does not create pain, therefore my pain is not real. That is forgiving. Uh, so this sorting out of what's false and what's true and becoming clear and about it is getting towards true perception. So that is a way to apply the course, is, is this sorting out process of um, learning what the truth is, learning what the atonement is, learning what's really true and what is really false. And becoming clear about it that is doing the course that is waking up it's just another way to frame it another way to put it into a form or to develop a system or a technique a set of steps or whatever you want to call it that moves you towards clarity about what the truth is that is helpful Miracles are everyone's right, but purification is necessary first. You have to move yourself up towards the atonement and get into a more healed state of mind. You cannot heal others with miracles if you are not healed. You cannot give the miracles that you have not received. I can only give the miracles I've received means I've got to get myself healed first, get my mind into a state of love, and love is quite a purified, um, healed state of being. Forgiveness is very loving, the atonement is a recognition of being perfectly loving, and true perception induces love. Once you get to being loving enough, your will is going to be whole enough and not divided. Your mind is not going to be split. And <clears throat> you're going to be much, much stronger. And you're going to be accessing and depending on God, receiving His power, and able to perform miracles for others. Because of the fact that you have accepted truth and you've learned to be the miracle and accepted that you are a miracle and that you're a miracle worker, the miracle mindedness is what you're trying to get to. Once you get to once you get to miracle mindedness, which is another word for right mindedness, which is another word for atonement and forgiveness, you are in 
a state of miracle mindedness, you're ready and willing to perform miracles, and then you can express and extend from that truth, you can give that love, that healing power to others through miracles to heal their mind, to lift them up, to correct their sickness, to raise them from death, physical and mental, to undo their suffering, and to help them come to the atonement as well. And that's the function of a teacher of God, being just enough inside the dream still that you're still in the world, but not of it recognizing that this is all false, not being deceived by anything you see because you know it's all illusion, you've forgiven it, you've overlooked it all, you see correctly, and now you're able to help others and be a miracle worker and perform, do miracles, express miracles, give miracles. Because of your... Um, the culmination of all of your work, all of your forgiving, all of your <coughs> forgiving, I suppose, all of your doing of forgiveness, all of your, all of your applying, implementing of truth that has healed you and made you whole. It is now the privilege of the forgiven to forgive. You now can forgive others and this statement is the privilege of the forgiven to forgive um, means that you're in a state of miracle mindedness you are being forgiving you know there's nothing to forgive you are now able to correct the minds of others by giving miracles. You're able to move them towards forgiveness. You're able to forgive them, overlook their sin and their belief in sin, and heal their mind because of because you're now in forgiveness. You're able to be forgiving. That means you are now able to perform miracles and you now can actually literally undo the insanity of others, you can restore other people to their right minds. By the power of your mind, you can now give forgiveness to another and bring them up to the atonement, um, if they're willing to receive that. Um, Miracles make minds one in God. Miracles unite you with your brother. Uh, miracles raise the level of communication. Miracles supply a lack. You are given to those who have more, to those who have less. Uh, they lift people up. Miracles lift up other people towards the truth. They heal other people and give them what you have. But until you have it, until you acknowledge that you have it because you accept it in you as the truth, you can't give it. Um, so you've got to do purification, which is your attempts to move towards forgiveness and truth, oh, yeah. um, so that you can become a miracle worker so that you can be loving enough to, ex to express love which is what miracles are they're expressions of love that have power in them the power to change reality in this world the power to break laws <laughs> the power to circumvent the ego and undo death and move mountains um, love is not just a feeling, it is, it is the power of God, it is unlimited in what it can do. But to get there and to be able to perform those miracles, there's sort of work to be done, or there's at least the illusion that there's work to be done, that there's things I've got to do, there's forgiveness I have to do, steps I have to perform, 
that really, in the truth, there isn't any steps to perform, there isn't anything to forgive, there isn't anything you need to do. But as you believe that there are things, you've got to learn to undo your belief that there's something that you have to do. And by unbelieving that you need to do a forgiveness, that kind of is doing a forgiveness. That is, that you're, you're trying to wipe out of your mind the belief that there's a problem. You're trying to get rid of the perception <coughs> um, <clears throat> You're trying to deprogram yourself from the perception that there is a real problem. So at the beginning of your doing a forgiveness always, it's always that you're in a state of I think there's a really big problem and it's real and it's terrible and something's really gone wrong and I've got to do something, oh my god. That is false perception and it means that you believe something that isn't true. You believe there's a great big problem. Your belief in there being a great big problem is the problem. You believe something really bad and big and wrong and terrible has happened. Your belief that it has happened is the problem. Um, so it, don't take it at face value because the, th the ego always believes in these perceptions that it has, these false perceptions, these lies, that I've got a really big issue that I need to forgive. That's only the starting point. That's you being mistaken. It's you, it's you being confused that you believe I need to do a big forgiveness because of how serious this is. What you really need to, to learn is that this is not serious. It is not a problem. It is not happening. It's not real. There isn't a need to be worried and upset. I'm not being attacked. Nothing's really happened. I'm not under a threat. I'm not in danger. I don't choose to believe in suffering and I don't make it happen. Getting yourself corrected back to the awareness that in truth there's nothing that I need to do because I don't believe there's even a problem and therefore I don't even need to do anything at all. I'm free. Uh, from suffering, I am free from guilt and pain, and and I don't need to do anything. That's what you're trying to get yourself back to, get out of this sort of hallucinating, insane state of mind, false perception, false beliefs, literally insanity, uh, where you perceive and believe things that aren't true, and then think that you have to do something about those untrue things. You've got to go up against them and fight with them and attack them and throw the course at them to make them go away, not realizing that you're the one that's putting the belief in them and making them real. You're the one that's having the hallucination. Your mind needs fixing. That starting point of when you need to do a forgiveness is a a state of being mistaken. It's a state where you're not perceiving correctly. You think you are, but you're not. Um, so then you've now got to recognize if I'm seeing anything that seems like a real sin, a real problem, a danger, a threat, sickness and suffering, and something's gone wrong, it's only because I'm not perceiving correctly, my mind is hallucinating and believing things that are false, I need correction to get my mind back to true perception where I will not see any of this and I will not believe any of this and I will not need to do anything. 
because in the truth, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> because nothing's really happened. This is just a dream. <laughs> This is the weird thing about forgiveness, is that you start out believing that you've got to do something and if you apply it correctly, you should end up in a state of mind where you recognize and perceive that you don't need to do anything because there isn't really anything happening, it's just a dream, it's just an illusion and you recognize it as it's just an illusion and you're not upset about it. Who could be upset about dreams unless he forgot that he is the dreamer? Miracles put you in touch with the fact that you are the one dreaming, that you are the cause of what you're perceiving and if you're not perceiving correctly, you need to have a correction of some kind, a healing in your mind of some kind, a reversal of backwards perception that allows you to see truly what the truth is, acknowledge the truth, accept the truth, not believe anything else, and therefore be at peace. So basically this whole world is a dream. If you could just get that and accept it fully, <laughs> that the whole thing is a dream so none of it matters. It's all bullshit, it's all a lie, there is no truth in the world, there is no world. This is the pinnacle of forgiveness, this is the, the atonement level perfect forgiveness, that there is no world. This is just a dream, none of it's real, I don't believe in any of it, and I don't need any of it, and I'm just going to laugh at it <laughs> because of how ridiculous it is and how deceived I was by it, by believing in it. Taking it seriously, that's the whole problem, and <clears throat> coming to realize that it's nothing. It is nothing, that is forgiving, that recognizing that these illusions are not real, they don't exist, they are nothing, they're not even really there. Nothing's happening in the world. That is forgiveness. <laughs> I've never sinned because I've never done anything. <laughs> that is forgiveness. There is no sin anywhere, no one has ever sinned, ever. That is forgiveness. Nothing's even happening. There is no space, there is no time. Nothing's happening outside of the kingdom of God, outside of eternity. All of these events are not true. This is forgiveness. All of this world is a big fat lie. None of it's true and real. That is forgiveness. Uh, so eventually, if you could just, when you get that, and you finally have perfectly corrected perception and your mind is aware of the truth and, and recognizes what the truth really is and sees the truth, you're ready to go to heaven because now you know that this is just a dream. It's not anything to be afraid of. You have power over the whole thing. Nothing can do anything against your will. You are perfectly innocent and invulnerable and immortal. That is the truth. Everything else that you believe has to be questioned and let go if it doesn't line up with that. Any other beliefs have to be undone, not believed in, withdraw your faith from them, let go of the false values and the specialness to be forgiving. When you are fully forgiving, you are going to see the real world, you are going to see the face of Christ. Forgiveness does not look upon bodies. The state of atonement does not look upon bodies. It is unable 
to see bodies because it overlooks the world, the forgiven world, a forgiven world cannot last. It overlooks all physical objects and sees through them the thin veil that covers the face of Christ. It disappears. In perfect forgiveness, the world disappears. You have revelation and you don't see bodies. You don't see the world of bodies, which is the world of sin. And now you are ready to go to heaven. You're done. If you can just get there. So all the how do I get there's is all just a, um, anything that works. <laughs> any, any, any way, any structure, any format, any set of steps. Hopefully ones that are efficient and um, don't take a long time and which save time. And this is the purpose of miracles, to save time, save you thousands of years of effort trying to heal your mind, trying to get back to the truth. Miracles are horizontal time goes along in a path like this, horizontally, goes through time. Miracles, because they heal you, raise you up from the dead and put you on a higher position than you were before. That higher position can be accomplished through a leap that occurs through a miracle, an expression of love, a receiving of love, from the Holy Spirit that would have taken you a very long time in time going gradually up towards this new position you can jump to it with a miracle and therefore the miracle collapses this segment of time and puts the two the say you're like going up here it takes this middle part out takes you straight from here to there goes bop 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 and therefore collapses time saves time by removing an interval of time introducing an interval of time out of the normal temporal order <laughs> and now you're higher closer to the truth than you were that would have taken you a very very long time and that's what miracles can do for you. You can receive, uh, through your willingness, you can receive miracles that you later can forget, can give. And Jesus also talks about um, meditation. It, meditation can be used to reach the atonement. If all that you do, if you're, if you're Buddha or someone who meditates a lot, I do not, um, just occasionally, you can eventually get to that truth, to perfect forgiveness and atonement, but Jesus describes it as being very long-winded, very tedious, where you're having to spend huge amounts of time trying to monitor thoughts and, ch and look at how the mind's working and stuff. It's not very efficient. And Jesus says that holy relationships are a much more efficient way to wake up and to use time where you can make far more progress by trying to turn your special relationships into holy relationships, learning to love others and yourself, forgiving applying the course principles in the relationship to try to become in alignment with the golden rule and recognize your oneness can be a lot faster at waking you up to the atonement forgiveness um, than doing shitloads of meditation for decades um, so applying trying to convert your relationships into holy ones, learning to relate with love, to forgive, uh, to, to learn to be more forgiving, 
is a, an accelerated path, which is why A Course in Miracles is a very efficient, fast track to the truth um, compared to other methods. But yeah, whatever method you're happy with, if you want to sit there for 20 lifetimes meditating and you get there eventually, then what does it matter? Everybody gets there eventually, all paths lead to God. Um, everyone is doing the curriculum even if they don't know it. It's just a matter of which way you choose to get there and accept it. Your life lessons, um, how you use your life lessons, it's all part of purification. So forgiveness is the atonement, it's a state of mind, it's the final state of true perception, it's perfect perception, it is healed mind, it is a state of being, not a state of doing, unless you express from it, in which case it's a state of miracle working, because it's miracle mindedness as well. Um, and so whatever you can do to get yourself into that viewpoint, that way of perceiving, that, um, that acceptance of the truth, that clarity about what is true and what's false, whatever it takes, whatever you want to do to get there is, is totally fine. Um, even if it's outside of A Course in Miracles, it's totally fine. Um, Holy Spirit approved <laughs> and whatever works to get you home to be reunited with God um, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna stop there and get some lunch and do some forgiveness well wait no uh, undo some unforgiveness <laughs> cancel some mistaken choices, uh, <laughs> be willing to let go of some attack thoughts and shift my believing towards facts <laughs> of reality and line myself up with the truth and do God's will. There we go. So God bless and thanks for listening, forgiveness, forgiveness, atonement, perception, blah, blah, blah. Love you, bye.